eggs and diabetes. The same things happen with eggs, right? People tell you eggs are good because they did a study where they gave people more eggs who were already eating a lot of animal products or they're switching eggs from something like to, they're putting, taking eggs out and putting sugar in. They're purposely giving people unhealthy food. But when we look at a diet, we look at diets that are done, studies done more carefully, of course. We look at all the studies on eggs, we find a lot of variables here where you have all different results. And you have many different studies on eggs showing different types of results. And there's a place where people are very confused about them. But we know that eggs are rich in choline, rich in animal protein. They rise IGF-1. They raise though that TMAO. They have a huge effect on raising TMAO. And it's well accepted now in the scientific literature that TMAO elevations in increase the risk of cardiovascular death and dementia. So egg is a food driving diabetes and dementia. And cholesterol also. Cholesterol may not raise your own production of cholesterol as much as saturated fat, but eating cholesterol still has negative effects. It interferes with beta cell function. It, may, it builds up insulin resistance. It blocks the, the, um, the cavalase, in other words, the, the little um, caves in the walls of the cells where the insulin molecules pass through. It blocks the uptake of the insulin molecule, makes you more insulin resistant. It increases your risk of diabetes. And cholesterol is a precursor for some of the molecules where the body can make more estrogen. In other words, it, your body produces more estrogen in, re in response to more cholesterol, increasing risk of prostate and breast cancer. And there's a link between egg consumption and, and especially breast cancer. But of course, this slide says that you know, if you're diabetic and you eat eggs, then you should get a brain transplant. <laughs> eat any eggs if you're diabetic and you have twice as likely to die in 20 years. That's what the data shows. And if you're pre-diabetic or overweight and you're eating eggs, then you're going to become diabetic, more likely. So it says seven men were eating seven or more eggs a week, 58% more likely to develop diabetes, and women are 77% more likely if they're eating eggs regularly. These animal products, which are void of phytochemicals and antioxidants, are risky foods. I'm teaching people something different. What's my, what's my basic principle? of a nutritarian diet. What's the, and let me tell you this. What's the only proven methodology to slow aging and extend human lifespan? Just one that's been proven. And I'm using that word proven in a very scientific sense here, very carefully, saying that it's reproducible in every study that was tested in all species of animals. And every scientist that tested it out showed the same thing. What's the only proven methodology to live longer? Yes. What's that? Right. Right. No, she said it right. Moderate, let's say this again so you could write this down and you could repeat that. Moderate caloric restriction. Moderate caloric restriction in an environment of micronutrient excellence. That's it. Nothing else. You have to eat more. You have to have a micronutrient rich diet that's nutritionally complete with all the nutrients humans need at the same time it has to be moderately, lower in moderately low in calories. If your diet is high in nutrients and you're eating excessive calories, you're not going to live as long, you're not going to have a long life. If your diet is moderately caloric restricted and you're deficient in nutrients, you're not going to live a long life. It has to have both. Nutritional excellence and moderate caloric restriction. That's it. You could go home now if you want. <laughs> but the opposite is true too. Because the whole point of my teachings are that as people increase the micronutrient quality of their diet and their comprehensive exposure to nutrients, and they take in lots of fiber, fiber, phytochemicals, antioxidants, and micronutrient completeness leads to decreasing appetite. And you now can control your appetite, whereas if you didn't have a good nutritional input, you can't control your appetite. It's impossible to eat the right amount of calories when you're nutritionally deficient because your body is signaling you, giving you signals to making you want to eat all the time unless you don't you feel too fatigued, too wiped out, too shaky, too weak, too uncomfortable. You've got to overeat calories when you're not eating a healthy diet. That's why diets of all description fail because they willy-nilly cut back on calories without improving the micronutrient quality of the diet. You follow that? You can't 
breathe only at 12 breaths a minute instead of 14. You could maintain it for a while, but you could be gasping for air in a little bit of time. And people can't maintain these diets that are not sustainable if they're not healthy. And it's good you're not sustaining those diets. So we're talking here, Bear, about H equals N over C, which means your healthy life expectancy, how long you're going to live, and the quality of your life in your later years, how great you're going to feel, how great your brain's going to function, how excited you're going to be about life, and how much you're going to be able to enjoy your life in your 80s and 90s, is based on your micronutrient per calorie exposure. Eat more calories now, you'll be eating less calories later because you'll be in a coffin. I always say, the f I know you like the foods you eat right now, but those foods don't taste that great once you're in the coffin. But the good news is that when you get healthy, your taste buds get stronger, your smell gets better, even your sight gets better. But mostly your taste and your smell get better, and you enjoy natural foods more. And people like what they get used to eating anyway. I've done this, I've been doing this for 30 years, and the more people stay on a healthy diet, and the more they ratchet up their adherence to it, the more they enjoy it. It becomes the way they prefer to eat, and the foods and the recipes become those foods and recipes they like eating the best. And they like it just as much as their old diet. Why not live to be 100 in great health and enjoy your life more? Is it really worth maintaining your addictions and take to take 20 years off your life? But you don't just take 20 years off your life because you suffer for 10 or 20 years before you die. And as you're getting to the last couple of years of your life, you're tortured. Doctors can't just let you die. They have to put you in a hospital and put tubes in all the orifices of your body. Right? It's like putting, it's like going to a, being in a, um, you know, being captured in a, in a, in a war and being tortured to death. They've got to torture you, and then they can let you die after they took all your money. <laughs> you can't die at home anymore peacefully, right? Rush off to the hospital. They can throw you in the ICU. Crack open your chest and put those tubes in. Then they're going to have a good life after that, right? It's insanity. I don't know about you guys. I worked as a, as a medical doctor. We had to do a residency in a hospital for three years, working in a hospital. We'd sit there in the residence. I'd be sitting in the eye. I'm the ICU doctor, putting them, you know, intubating people, putting in central lines, putting them. That's my job. We'd sit there in the back room with the other residents, and we'd say, wow, if you get older, you want to go to, and you're getting sicker, you want to ever be taken to a hospital and be cared for like this? We, we all agreed, no, no way, I'm not coming to a hospital. Just die at home. We all agreed, we're not going to a hospital to die. To make you, so you can live a week or a few days longer to be tortured like that? It's crazy. But one thing we know is that our body is a miraculous self-healing machine. Disease is not natural. It's unnatural. We eat unnatural foods. We have bizarre diseases that happen to us. And our life becomes bizarre and tragic. Your body is designed to live a whole life well. Just like the deer running around in the woods. They're not on dialysis. They're not taking Prozac. Low calorie, high nutrient intake prolongs life, and it does so by multiple mechanisms. Increasing DNA repair, right? Preventing DNA damage, keeping, maintaining telomere length, building up longevity proteins, removing toxins from the cells. You know, your body is like a machine, like a factory. It takes in raw material, it processes that raw material, making a product. It makes products that are good for you. But it also produces a lot of waste products, too. And as the waste products build up, you age. We can't live forever. But you're going to age, if you build up that waste products and you don't get rid of it, you're going to age at 10 times the rate. We have to, the key to not aging rapidly, the key to slowing aging, is getting rid of the waste products. So we have to put... We want to 
have that factory not be overworked. We don't want to produce extra waste. Don't forget, the battery in the flashlight maintains its charge if you get the flashlight turned off. The more we use our body, the more we rev it up, the more we increase our metabolism, the more food we put in it, and the biggest stress on our body is digesting food. Food keeps us alive, but excess food keeps kill, is going to kill us. We have to eat the minimal amount of food we need to survive, not the maximum amount. And when you eat less, it slows your metabolic rate. So here I am at 150 pounds, and my basal metabolic rate, let's just say for argument, I'll pick a wild number out of the pack. Let's say I need 1,600 calories a day to maintain my weight. Okay? Now what if I ate 1,650 now? Well, 50 pounds, 50 calories extra times 365 days a year, wow, that's about four pounds a year I'm going to gain, five pounds a year I'm going to gain. Over 10 years, that's 50 pounds. Now I'm going to weigh 200 pounds. Oh, I just took 20 years off my life. Just from an extra 50 calories a day. Okay, back to 1,600 again. Is that right? Go back to 1,600. What if I eat only 1,550? What if I eat 50 calories too little? Am I going to waste away, lose my muscles, become osteoporotic and sarcopenia? You want to, I'm going to become too thin? What's going to happen to me at 1,500, 1,550? What? What? Nothing. Well, not nothing. My muscles and my bones will get stronger, not weaker. It'll actually, it'll stabilize. There won't be so much activity of the bones going on and off the bone. So my bones will become more stable, less osteoporotic. My metabolism will slow. My body will resist weight loss. By reducing body temperature, slow, which is going to save energy for the body, it's going to conserve my flashlight, because most of the energy is made to, consume, to keep your body temperature up. I don't have to run that furnace so much. My furnace will lower. Won't be aging as much. I'll be colder in the wintertime, for sure. I go skiing, and I love winter sports, but I you know, wear the gloves, and I have the heaters in my feet. But in the summertime, I'm not going to be bothered by the heat as much. So you run a little lower body temperature. Your metabolism slows down. Your thyroid gets slower, a little slower, which makes you live longer. And your respiratory quotient, you don't waste as many calories through breathing either. And your heart rate slows as well. And you age slower. You're, you age slower because you ate a little less. While the rest of America is trying to do all these tricks and gimmicks to try to speed up the metabolic rate, and every diet book on the shelf in the bookstore is telling you some kind of way, you know, the high metabolism diet, the super metabolism diet, the great metabolism diet. The, what are these? It's the opposite of what you should be doing. You know, all these diets are trying to make you shorten your lifespan. And these high animal product diets, the, kale, the paleo and the keto and whatever it is they are, the boo-boo the and the babo and the, and the bullet and the, all these you know, sexo, whatever they want to tell you, this diet they're going to give you. It's all about instantaneous, right, giving you what you want to eat, telling you what you want to hear, telling you you can eat more meat, eat, you know, drink, have more butter, whatever it is, put more cheese, eat your... I like, I personally like the Twinkie diet the best. <laughs> you just eat Twinkies. Takes 30 years off your life, but who cares? You can't eat that many Twinkies, you get sick of eating Twinkies, so you lose weight. It doesn't matter if you die 30 years younger. All right, so you slow the aging process, it reduces your body temperature. For every 100 calorie increase in metabolism rate, the risk of death increases by 25%. In the higher range of thyroid function, if we divide normal thyroid function, here's lower range of normal, here's higher range of normal, cut it right down the middle. In the second and the higher range of thyroid function, you have double the risk of heart attack. We want our thyroid to be a little, we want our body to live a little slower. That's the opposite of you hear from anybody else. Who's telling you this? Nobody's going to say to you that. They'll all say, take more pills, raise your thyroid, read this book, thyroid book, you know, read, read this new book, the thyroid diet. Get your thyroid functioning, rev up your metabolism, lose more weight. All ridiculous. All, all ridiculous. And time-restricted eating 
not just eating less calories, but spending more time of your life not eating extends your life. You don't want to keep putting food in your body all day long. Isn't that, but that's what the people are telling you to do, right? Eat all day, snack all day, keep putting the food in. Go to the gym, have the trainer tell you, give it his diet. He'll tell you to eat, go home, start shoving protein in and eat protein every hour. Because the goal is to get as big as you can. What I'm saying to you that it's better to eat more infrequently, to have a narrow caloric window, so you have a bigger period of time when you're not eating each day, because it's when you're not eating food is when your body can most effectively repair itself, heal itself, reduce fat, and also, during that time of not eating, that's when you're not aging. That's when you're not aging. You're in a state of suspended animation like when you're not eating. What if one of those time capsules they put you to sleep and you fly to Mars and you wake up 30 years later but you're still 20 years old? You ever see that movie? There's a million movies like that, aren't there? So here's a study where they took women who had breast cancer and half of them had a, a non-eating window of less than 13 hours and half of them had a not eating window of more than 13 hours. That means the time when you finished eating dinner to the time you started the breakfast. And at more than 13 hour window, they had a 36% lower risk of breast cancer recurrence for, over that 10 year period. You follow that? Even when you have breast cancer, even when you've destroyed your body and so you already have an advanced disease like cancer, it still works to make you live longer when you eat right, when you do the right thing. It's obviously much more protective if we do things before we wait till we're near dead. 